What is X-linked A-gamma globulinemia? That's a mouthful. Um, or XLA for short. Or Bruton's disease. XLA is a failure of pre-B cells to differentiate into B cells and subsequent absence of gamma globulins in the blood. So gamma globulins, part of those are immunoglobulins or IG. So we'll talk about that in this video. How B cells mature is Ig heavy chain genes are rearranged first in the pro B cell. So this is the pro B cell. And there is a certain, like inside this pro B cell, there's a certain uh, DNA, uh, DNA type structure, right? And then part of the DNA recombines to form the heavy chain of the I, of the immunoglobin. So this is a heavy chain here. This is heavy chain. And then this darker blue is the light chain of the immunoglobin. And immunoglobulins can be attached or first attached to the B cell or they can be secreted off. And so the heavy chains are rearranged or combined first and then the light chains are rearranged. And in the XLA, the B cell maturation stops. So as it progress right here, it doesn't, it doesn't go past this step. You can see in this picture they've kind of indicated that the BTK problem is in this step. And BTK is because of the mutation in the tyrosine kinase, it doesn't continue on its development or its maturation. And the kinase that is mutated is called the Bruton tyrosine kinase, or the B-cell tyrosine, tyrosine kinase, or the BTK. So the BTK is, gets knocked out by a mutation, and so the light doesn't undergo recombination, and so then you just have a bunch of heavy chains and the light chains don't match up, don't connect. So they've actually seen a lot of heavy chains floating around, a lot of heavy chains, but no, no light chains because BTK is knocked out. And so the normal maturation is you know, the pro B cell, and there, the, you can watch videos, and maybe I'll put some links in here, but there's videos that talk about the VDJ part of the DNA that gets re, goes undergoes recombination, and then that's what give, gives rise to all the specificity of all these different immunoglobulins. As we talked about here, like the secreted IG of any isotype types, remember, gamed. These are the isotypes of the immunoglobulins IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, and IgD. These plasma cells, once they become activated, then they start secreting all these IgGs. And if you have one antigen, only one type of IgG or immunoglobulin will attach to this, whereas this one it won't because of the certain epitopes or the the variable portion on these tips that correspond to every antigen. So that's why it's a big problem and people that have this condition uh, don't have a lot of uh, immune support or immune function is because of this this problem here. So you can see that through these types right here you you develop A gamma globulinemias and you can see all the different type here but we're just talking about XLA in this video. And this is this in this maturation process this right this part is antigen independent. 
So do, regardless of the antigen's presence, this process usually happens. And then this mature B cell sits around until an antigen gets, you know, until this B cell gets stimulated to either turn into a memory B cell or turn into a plasma cell and secrete antibodies so the, it can be flagged for pickup and can be destroyed by the immune system. So right here, BTK gets knocked out. It does not produce these, it does not undergo light chain recombination. And so this is a flag, a check in the system saying, oh, we have to halt the B cell maturation process. So free heavy chains can be found in the cytoplasm, but no light chains can be produced to complete the fabrication of the in immunoglobulins. BTK maps on the T X or sorry the X chromosome, so the disorder is seen primarily in or not primarily exclusively in males. So what are the XLA characteristics? So there's absent or marked marked decrease in the number of B cells. You have depressed serum levels of all classes of the immunoglobulins, Ig. The number of pre-B cells in the bone marrow may, may be normal or reduced because it only happens after that. Underdeveloped or rudimentary germinal centers in the peripheral lymphoid tissue, so like lymph nodes, pyre patches, the appendix, and tonsils, they might be underdeveloped because the B cells that reside there aren't being matured. And you have absence complete absence of plasma cells. Why? Because they never really reach this state. These B cells never reach this mature cell, so when the they can't become activated to turn into a plasma cell. And then but the normal T cell mediated responses are still intact. So X LA manifests approximately six months after age. Why is because when babies are born, when we're all, when we were all born, our maternal immunoglobulins were in charge of fighting off most of our infections. But that's why it manifests approximately six months after age because these maternal immunoglobulins are then become depleted. So reoccurrent bacterial infections, such as acute and chronic pharyngitis, sinusitis, ear infections, otitis medius, uh, bronchitis, and pneumonia are common. And the causal organisms, which are bacterial pathogens, are usually cleared by antibody-mediated opsonization and phagocytosis. Remember that once a pathogen gets in, these antibodies, these antibodies stick to it and get flagged, it's called opsonization, and then get flagged for pickup by the phagocytes to be engulfed. However, because you don't have these antibodies, that's definitely a problem. So you have haemophilus influenza, streptococcus pneumonia, and staphylococcus aureus. Those are the bacterial pathogens that are not cleared but are in these patients, but are usually cleared by the antibody-mediated uh, process. Antibodies are also important for neutralizing certain viruses. So because you don't have any antibodies, you're susceptible to certain viral infections, especially those caused by enteroviruses or stomach, stomach bugs. So how do you treat these patients? Well, sometimes they can go on replacement therapy. And what happens is you get IVG or uh, intravenous uh, Ig or you get immunoglobulins from uh, other people's serum, and so that's how patients can fight bacterial infections. Patients with XLA, uh, they clear most viral, fungal, protozoal infections, like we said earlier, because their T cell mediated immunity is still intact. An interesting point, too, is that it's unclear, but you know, up to 20% of these patients that have XLA, they also get some kind of autoimmune disease. So we, are not under, we don't understand the link between those observations. But that's XLA, and so we'll see you in the next video.